you know, I met a girl here and she felt that I'm, I'm, I'm an hour. So, right. you know, they don't associate themselves. They don't marry hours. Wow. You know? So, but if you are on Clubhouse going back and forth and you don't know your history, you don't know the, why this uh, misconception or mis, um, communication happened, yeah. then, you know, you're just wasting your time. Yeah. You know, I always tell people that it's, it's important to look for the source than to just sit there and just say whatever you think is right. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, that's, you know, if you go to any African cookout, you know, which we always do during the summer or the winter, I mean, somebody is having a birthday. And you know that we always have this conversation about African-Americans. And unfortunately, we have a certain name that we call them. I don't want to, you know, mention the name because I don't want to empower that name. Right, right. African-American woman, how they struggle, they survive and be able to help you know, their kids to go to school, you know, and, and, and when you look into it, it's not stereotype, it's just a fact. So I decided to use a uh, character to tell the story in the context. Yeah, 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 Aboso with Papa Shanti. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, The Shanti Network, TSN. And like I said, you already know i mean today's episode is is going to be special you know i have a young um gentleman from the continent you know an author of a book and you know we're gonna have some experience discussion from the book you know dissecting the um the narration and the, the stories why this and why that charlie welcome to the show man thank you thank you sir i really appreciate the opportunity man it's you know it's amazing yeah. summer is finally here and you know right now we are ready to go outside and you just you know when, when did you release your book by the way um a few days ago uh june 14th at uh, june 11th june 11th yes i self-publish okay. it on amazon wow so the book is on amazon yes. um but you know tell tell us a little bit about yourself and you know where you come from and then you know we could uh, move forward on you know dissecting the book the book okay so uh, my name is georgia memo mm -hmm. and i'm from ghana and i live in Leesburg, virginia mm -hmm. uh, i've been in the u.s for uh, since 2012 um so i currently work as it support analyst oh, wow. and but then i love art and i love um, a lot of reading so and i believe that i have creativity so right. um, i put a lot of thoughts when i observe I yeah just put them on paper so that's the reason why i came out with this book called wow the return. The book is called The Return, and you know, The Return is an inspiring story of struggle and survival that explores and seeks to bridge the gap between the two worlds of Africans living in the, in the United States and African Americans. So we've always had this, you know, issues of Africans in the diaspora, the kind of experience. So, I mean, I, I myself, you know, I can tell uh, um, um, some stories, I have some stories that my time during my time in high school i had with african americans you know when yeah. we were labeled uh, african booty scratches and so on you know oh did you live in the mud huts did you live on the tree and yeah. so on and so forth so that experience was there how does the book you know speak of you know the experience between the africans and the diaspora versus an african american thank you thank you for the question so um, the whole idea of me coming out with a book started 2004, back home when I was in Ghana. But the story was supposed to be somebody coming to the U.S. And then, but when I finally got here and I started interacting with African-Americans and also uh, hanging out with Africans who are already here in the U.S., I realized that um, I need to tell the story that will represent both worlds because right. it's a world that... As you said, you know, there are a lot of stereotypes that we have as Ghani uh, Africans who are in the U.S. Mm -hmm. about African-Americans and vice versa. Yeah. So um, what really shocked me was I was interacting with this gentleman who is an African-American. Mm -hmm. And he 
said, oh, I thought you guys, you know, speak French. How come you speak English? And I said, well, uh, because I'm from Ghana. And, uh, and he said, oh, really? And he said, so uh, why? You know, because the misconception is that you guys don't speak English. I said, well, because we're colonized by the British. Right. And this gentleman asked me, what is British? So wow. then he got to me and said, and I started interacting with other people. Um, I used to work with uh, one of the banks in Richmond. Mm -hmm. And there was a lady who came to my desk one day and said, we we're talking about vacations. And a lot of people said, oh, they take flights, you know. And the lady asked me, George, have you taken a flight before? And the whole building was quiet. The whole floor was quiet. So, and this African-American lady, right? Yeah. So, and then my boss came and said, you know what? Don't worry about it, you know. And, you know, and I took it cool because, I mean, it's, how do you expect me, how do you expect that I got to the U.S. if, right. if I didn't take a flight? So, these are little nuances and, you know, interpretations that are misconceptions that a lot of, uh, a lot of African-Americans have about us as Africans. Africans, yeah. And vice versa. So, um, I decided to explore more. And I interacted with a lot of people, and even you know, and then finally I decided to uh, bring the book. Okay, so but in the book, right? I know uh, it began with a story um, of Jasmine going through the school system, high school, college. Can you tell us uh, a little bit about that? Because when I was reading the book, I kind of uh, saw the struggle uh, from how Jasmine, you know. Um, um, from where, he, where, where he, uh, she grew up and, you know, household and, you know, even in school around 19, was it 1985 or 82? Yeah, in between 1982, 85 there about, yes. And this was a story from Jasmine, then Jasmine met, met African, an, an African or what so, was, he, what was so, it about? So when, when I finally got a story and I was, you know, I was just discussing with a friend of mine who is in Richmond, uh, Eugene, and I narrated the story the way I wanted to, to, to put it. And one thing that he told me that I remember and I did follow was that do not mimic the African-American woman struggle. So I s started digging into it. And I have a lot of people that I could refer to based on my friendship or relationship I have with, yeah. with those people. Then I realized that it's true. There are a lot of us as Ghanaians or Nigerians, oh, Africa, yeah. Africans oh, who Africa. come to the state we do not really understand the struggle of African American women, how they struggle, they survive, and be able to help, you know, their kids to go to school, you know, and and, and when you look into it, it's not stereotype, it's just a fact. So I decided to use a character to tell the story mm -hmm. in a contemporary form, right? So that's how come Jasmine came into into mind. So I used Jasmine as a, a young girl who grew up in the hood with a mom. And the mom, it's her name is Donna, mm -hmm. who she struggled with skipping three jobs. But she felt that the only way her daughter can come out of the hood is for her to get education, education. right? So she was doing three jobs and struggling to make sure that she takes her daughter out of the hood to a private school through the church. So, and this is something that a lot of African-Americans could relate to. Right. So part one of my book, it's more or less like... African Americans, when they read a story, most of them could relate. To I it. um, I you know, I pinpoint some something about the church. So I was going to ask uh, Jasmine and the church. What about the church? So, so this is a well, like what about a, the church with with us, bl black people, black folks? We we love the church. You know, we we love to be part of. We are very religious people, and that's one thing that we can relate to as from both world. Mm -hmm. You know, Africans, African Americans love the the church, and they love Africans. the yeah, African also. So um, for that, they have you know, I put in there that there's a shelter where a Reverend Father back in the day who used to work there, and they help uh, you know this donor to put Jasmine into this wonderful Catholic school. So and then she, Jasmine is smart because the mom is you know is also smart, smart yeah, and be able to help her. You know, make sure that she was in the track team, she was in a debate club, and then eventually she became the top class student when during graduation. So right. the history of that, which a lot of us Africans don't know, will come with a lot of Africans who come here or even back home. So so what what in the book, what do we know? I mean, okay, the history of that, you said the history of that what a lot of Africans don't know. So 
I I want to understand what do we know in the beginning, as in um, when we come here. Um, as when we come here, with based on my observation and little research that I've done, we we, we don't know a lot. <laughs> We don't know. Is it is it because of our cultural differences or um, us not, you know? I think most of the time, not to pick the word from you, it's about the media. It's about what the media puts out there. Because when you know it, if you're back home in Africa, what we see on the TV is not what when we come here we see, right? right? And I've explored that also in a other part of the book, because then. The, miscon- the misconception is to be taken out and then we'll look at the real picture and say what 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 are the issues because one thing that i've observed recently is that there's a discussion going on on clubhouse mm-hmm. there are a lot of discussion about african americans and africans rough yeah, you, you, yeah, I was, and then I was in there yes and a lot of people and you could see the anger from both sides but nobody is listening and these are some of the things that i explore in a book but don't you think that itself is just a a human, you know, behavior, human characteristics, or let's say black people, that's our characteristics. Just, you know, to give you the time for you to even speak, you know, is, is something that I find it difficult, right? That's how we think. Yeah. Why do I, want, you know, need to allow you to speak? Why can't I speak? Why can't I be the one, you know, in, in you know, in the first position? Well, unless uh, the only if you if you look at other other races or other other people, right, the Asians, you see that they are always united at the forefront, and that's how come this issue about Asian, um, you know, attack is getting you know right. some kind of you know attention. One thing that I believe is that if the black agenda in America cannot succeed unless all black people on earth come together, that's my belief. And based on my observation and even the recent conversation on, on clubhouse right yeah so bef- before i ask you you know i dive in into another question in the book i just want to focus on this one you know to me i you know i think that it's been there for a long time which is it's it's not whether an african or african-american thing. it's just a black a black thing with the inception since before slavery even before slavery we have always been separated we always separate each other through wars and all that. I mean, I know, you know, there have always been wars when it comes to other races and so on. But for us, it, it seems to be like hatred, you know. Um, instead of just coming together and fight the oppressor, we then, you know, decide to support, or one part will support the oppressor to defeat the other part. You see what I'm saying? I mean, you, you you could be right on that, but there's there's an area of that that I explore in the book, which I don't want to give away. You don't want to give away because Just a little bit, a little bit because it's 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 kind of controversial, and the reason is because I I I've I've been to uh, Dubai W B Dubai Center in Ghana yeah. a lot, and I've I've you know you know it's a diaspora kind of center. Yeah. Back in the day, where people come from the U S. from the U K. and come and talk passionate about black agenda Pan- right? Pan-African- pan-africanism Pan-African. right if you look look at the back back in the history of africa africa was not was we we form we were formed based on our tribal lines right and we value our traditions and then we value the chiefs and then the elders right yeah now if you want to take it from that point of view we always have um you know small wars here and there, conf- you know, uh, fight here and he- here and there. What happened most of the time, based on what I've observed or what I've heard from a lot of people that I've met, is that back in the day, um, if you if a tribe, um, a lot of people say slavery started in Africa or we have already practicing slavery, which right. sometimes is not true. Mm-hmm. And because back in the day, if a tribe, one tribe fight among, if, if they fight among themselves based on the land or maybe something, the the, the 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 winning tribe takes on the losing tribe. Right. And then they do not become slaves. They become subject. So the difference between the slave, re- slaves and subject. Yes. They are two different. Two, two, so, they're, they're, yes. Okay. So subjects, you'll have your own area you live, but you are part of that kingdom. But then you, you still don't you still, have a choice. 
but then you it you are not it's, you are not oppressed but it's not your choice yes not I, I won't say it's not choice but i won't say that you'll be you're captured and then you still have a freedom you leave if you look at a, if you even if you look at a, the, the bible but then it says you have to you know fight your way in in to become um um a member where now you can make uh, decisions to to make a change in that in that society what they believe at the time is that whatever the chief or the king at the time decide that is going to that's the direction they want to go those subjects also follow the same direction if they're going to fight they join together so it becomes a kingdom but you also know that they are not actually the uh, they are not original people they also have their the areas where they live and they practice whatever religion or tradition they but have. Then they they don't They've have been, they, they are subjects but then they don't have the um, um the free will to become uh mem- you know part of the family to be a chief or a queen or or no, whatsoever. No, for that no, but they still have the lands, they still have the opportunities to, you know, to enjoy the and then the benefit that, that of itself, the land. But that yes. itself also create tension because if for example you you have me uh, um and my family or my family and I in captivity right as a subject as a subject and then i see you know you guys are you know enjoying because that you own the land i don't own no land because i'm a just, i'm a subject a time will come where the people you know that came that will come after me who say hey enough is enough you see that's where the issue is with us yeah so people will rise and say enough is enough and then separation would the, would then come in yeah for me i think that uh, the conversation is to start on a very very positive angle a lot of things as part so know. let's focus on the clubhouse right you said yeah. i know there's been a lot of discussions african african american yes and, and it's still whole, going on every day why why is why why, why can africans march with us when it comes to uh, blk i mean uh, uh, BLM, Black Lives Matter issues, and so on. Why are Africans the why why why? Because most of the Africans um, in the diaspora don't really know the the, um, the story behind you know the movement, right? It, it, if that's the case, then you know it's understood. But a lot of people do know, but they just choose not to because they say, "Oh, some African Americans are like this." They are violent. They are this. They are that. So why should I put myself in this situation, you know, to make a change? When my mindset is that, oh, I want to, you know, come to America and go back. I mean, it, it, it's you're correct. You know, I will. I won't say that I'm. I'm, I'm an expert in the black history or black black life right, right. matter issue situation. But these are the, some of the things that I talk about in the book. So can you tell us the differences um, that we find a among little bit ourselves. of the differences that you so mean. as you said um a lot of people think that um the, what it based on what the media show them that we live on trees mm-hmm. we have no education and we are very primitive people we beat our women uh women are subservient to us and on the hand, other hand we see that as you said uh african americans are violent they are not well educated and they feel they are very lazy and all those things are in the book they re- they are they, on this i just want to say that when you read a book then you i, I gave the book to um an african american lady to read and then after she read the book she was like oh my god i didn't know these things i didn't know that you know they are well educated people from africa even though she see some of them in the US mm-hmm. she totally ignored and for her to also see how we also see them she felt that we need to have a conversation and she's willing to talk she's willing to dialogue she's willing to have a conversation because until we do that we will still going to fight we're still going to go to because the conversation that is going on clubhouse is totally different this one is it's like push and pull factor but at the end of the day the middle ground has to be found we need to be able to look at the but, issues but you and see, say our issue is yes. that like i'm not it's like most of the people they don't they just don't want to learn you know in order for you to know your history right you got to look for it you got to you know look for it and find where you, uh, what your your history entails so 
if you are on Clubhouse going back and forth and you don't know your history, you don't know that why this uh, misconception or mis um, communication happened, yeah. then you know you're just wasting your time. Yeah. You know, I, I always tell people that it's it's important to look for the source yeah. than to just sit there and just say whatever you think is right. Yeah. I mean, you're right because I I don't want to sound like I'm an expert in terms of how to bring the Africans to Africans and African Americans together, mm -hmm. right? But I just use characters to tell the story. Right. And when you read it, then you'll be able to, as, as I said, a friend of mine wrote, uh, read a book and then she felt that, oh, I didn't know a lot of these things, right? How, but there are a lot of things also that we, we share in common. Uh, we talked about religion, how yeah. passionate we are in terms of religion, church and all that. The same thing happens in African American community in Africa. And then our food, the things like family, the way we value family, and all those things. We are not saying that other people don't do, but we can relate to that. There are a few things that we can pinpoint. You know, how our mothers make sure that we are, we are taken care of the same way, I'm, you know. So in as much as the differences are there, I just expose some of those in using characters, mm -hmm. you know, based on my observation and based on um, things that I've, I've had things that I've experienced. You know, I always say that your experience, so nobody's opinion can override your own personal experience. Right. So, and I didn't want to own anything in the book and somebody would come and say, oh, why did you say this? That's why I use characters to tell the story. Yeah. So that you can, if you, if you read the whole part one, you realize that as an African, you'll be able to see Africans who... If you're an African, you don't know much about African-American community. Right. Then you then to get to know. Yeah. Right. And the story is a boy decided, you know, watching TV and then seeing, you know, a, a gangster boy who is in the hood, you know, selling drugs and, uh, you know, you know, doing all kinds of things. And was watching a TV and right, saw that yeah. uh, there's an, a commercial um, that is showing um, how to check your DNA and all that. And... He decided to buy it, buy the DNA, you know, yeah. and then test, you know, got a test back and realized that he's almost 80% African. African yeah. So he has to find his way. And then he eventually found his way, took his grandmother back to, to Africa with the help of an African, um, African student in America. Oh, yeah. And then they went back home and the whole perception, sorry, the whole perception about Africa you know, Change. changed for them because yeah, drastically they, they didn't know they thought Africa, of course, we know there are a lot of issues in Africa. They are, of course, where we come from, there are issues that are very, 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 you know, we need to take care of. But we also know that there are wonderful places in, in Ghana or in Africa. You go to Angola, you go to Cameroon, you go to even Nigeria. Nigeria, yeah. Yes. There are a lot of wonderful places that are way, way better than even some places in across the globe. So we just want to, I just want to expose that and say, if you're an African-American reading, you realize that, oh, Africa is not what the media has, you know, portrayed. Out there. Yeah. So then I will be, I should be able to see Africans or see Africa in a different way. That's why I like the, 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 the year of return that, you know, have, you know, yeah. the, 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 our president brought to, you know, Ghana. 2019. Uh, 2019. Yes. I actually came out with my title a long time ago. Before that happened, yeah. so uh, I think that uh, if if you get a book, uh, you should be able to see the two world and be able to learn something uh, positive. When buying a used car, do you really trust the seller to tell you everything about the conditions of the car? Most of the times, they don't even know the faults that come with the car. Protect your investment and get a pre-purchase inspection with an ASC certified technician with many years of shop experience. You don't even have to be there. The report that they send you comes with a video on site about the findings they had about the car. So in the comfort of your own home, you can choose any car in the DC, Maryland, Virginia area and inspect it as a call away. Yeah, this right now is The Return by George Amemo. And this show is brought to you by Carfax. Carfax, if you want your vehicle checked before you take it out from the auction, Carfax, they will check all the facts on the car, whether good or bad. Now, let's uh, look at this, right? What about the Africans? So, do you have the African you know, experience here also? Did, did you have any narration about how an, an African 
sees yeah or, you know, or view an african-american can yeah. we can we speak a little bit about yeah it? i mean that's you know if you go to any african cookout you know which we always do during the summer or the winter i mean somebody is having a birthday and you know that we always have this conversation about african-americans and unfortunately we have a certain name that we call them i don't want to you know mention the name because i don't want to empower that name right, right? Yeah, yeah. so uh, we always have these conversations uh, where we feel that oh they are this they are lazy they are so i did it you know if you read a back part two of the book at a certain point mm-hmm. i explore that how people have different conversation and i somebody think that they know better they know how uh, african americans their system work and instead of we bringing somebody from you know from african american community to come to our cookout we we ourselves we you know Af- african here most of the time i could be wrong yeah most of the time we gather and then those conversation comes in and then we talk more about them and then we you know say all kinds of things so at a certain point of the book um there was a cookout and you know kwami i use a character called kwami, kwami yeah who came here for school right it's high school which a lot of us a lot of africans come most yeah of the time. most of yeah yeah and he met this guy who now knows that he's from you know he's 80 percent from africa right and wants to go back and approach this kwami guy and then kwami said i want to bring him to the cookout and then that brought a whole lot of conversation right as to oh african americans like this or he's going to take advantage of you yeah you know he's going to introduce you to drugs how dare you do, do so that, yeah you know we have things like this which to us most of the time we're just trying to protect ourselves right i mean don't protect- you think it's is coming from you know the african mindset of the tribalistic way it, it that's why that's, you are this you are that that's why i'm that's why the, I, I i put that in the book because i would have done this service to the African American side to talk about their, you know, our do the service to us oh, Africans yeah, yeah. where we where we talk about our side, how we see we see them, and we do not talk about their side. So then the it seems like the African needs to change his or her mind based on the the ideas coming from the tribal way, as in, oh, this is an Asante uh, man, this is an LM man is you know that kind of like stereotype oh they are this they are that so you know don't bring them here we don't we shouldn't marry this this tribe you know there's always issue you're right that's what we always bring here when we come to the u.s you know sometimes you know i met a girl here and she felt that i'm, I'm, I'm an hour so right you know they don't associate themselves they don't marry hours wow yeah. so but i know that back home we have our patrilineal a matrilineal yeah, system right and I, I brought that in the book as well there are reasons why those things happen right mm-hmm. there are reasons why there are people who believe in patrilineal and there are people who believe in matrilineal yeah. so kwami and his cousin who is a doc, medical doctor who, who are living in the u.s they come from both families Family, where yeah. one is from patrilineal and one is from matrilineal yeah. and i brought a story because in most of the time as you said Oh, the wave, this one is coming from here. Yeah. The other person is coming from here. Yeah. And then so we don't marry into these people. But I just want to tell the story that even back in our home country, the Elwes and then the the, the Shantis, there has always been a long time friendship yeah. in They're between. Yeah, ally, allies. Uh, yeah. Exactly. During so the war. The war, war and all yeah. that. So yeah. I, I decided to explore that because... And it's good that you ask that question that we do, you know, we try to separate each other. Yeah. And I brought that in the book. So if you read a book, you'll be able to learn that we in, in a certain part of Africa, there are people who eat from their mother's side and there are people who eat from their, their father, father's side. Father's side, yeah. Yeah. So, um, it's, so exposing that, again, also you ask a question, you know, should we let them know? But I think both ways, you know, in African-American community, we need to also let them know that in as much as we all have the same color, we have our own right. culture. Yeah. You know, and then the only way we can cohabit is learn from each other. Mm-hmm. Learn that there are issues that there are issues that as Africans in the US, there are issues that um that are in African American community. There was a point where I talked to, the, the book talked about um if you get a um if you let's say you know get an accident or maybe drink drive right back in in africa 
you might uh, your your uncle who is here from a rich home yeah could go speak to the police and, and then, you know yeah. and then let it let it go it will not be on your record right but when it comes to the u.s it's different right? the system is working the system is yeah it's different if yeah. you're an african-american and you're in the hood and you've done something little it's still going to be on your record for a long right. time yeah and so these are some of the things that we don't know and we feel that uh, in my book i think that if you read a book thoroughly yeah. both the part one and the part two you should be able to find yourself you should start a conversation and that's what we need a very healthy one and we have both the part one and part two in, in the book in the yes book. and that talks about all the things that i'm talking about yeah right about the patrilineal about the slavery how slavery started how nightclub started you know and these are things that i have heard from people but i just want to put them out there so that it can st- spark a conversation and said oh how did clubbing started oh wow you know how do we start how did club started and how did um, so, so you have that in the, in the book, book. I mean, yes. We, we, yes we just want to leave it to to people, the readers yeah, to, to be able read, to yeah. yeah to be able to see so see, again yeah. it's a fictional story um i don't we don't people will love that part yes people it, would want to hear how club was started you know black people yes hey clubs yes, yes. Cool so counts. exactly by the far side how did uh, it start <laughs> yeah. you know and and you, you know you know during slavery the slave masters did something so well to their advantage what they did was they separate the lang- their people if you speak this language let's say you speak um yoruba they will mix you with somebody who speak a can so that you cannot yeah. communicate with the person wow. right but they what they did not know is that by the fireside it's something that runs across the west coast of africa right that in the evening our great our grandmothers our great grandmothers the father sits us down and tell us a story mm-hmm. And that has lived with them and that has moved on to a different thing. So if you read a book, get a copy of the book and you will be able to learn a lot. Even though it's a fictional book, you'll be able to relate. Then, to then you can could, you could tell that even for, uh, you know, music artists or even the movie writers and so on, storytellers, it's still coming from that, um, um, you know, um, olden days where we used to sit for, uh, you know, and, and hear st- kind of stories from... Yeah the grandmothers grandfathers and the elders yeah. and so on yeah yeah and so, those stories are not only for african americans to, to to learn but for us are african as well for us to be able to say you know what even though it's a fictional book i think i can align to this yeah i think you are right about this you know and if if it's back you know and you, it's good we mentioned clubhouse because the moment it depends on who lead that conversation right if it's african americans that are that are leading that particular club then if you're an African who wants to speak and share experience, you get shut down. Yeah. And vice versa. If you're an African who is leading a conversation, an African-American comes in, oh, you're too emotional, they shut you down. But can't we just both look at the story from two sides and say, okay, let me listen to you. Okay, how can we work together? So I think that's why this book is is here. Yeah, the book will actually... Bridge the gap. Yeah, will bridge the, ga- uh, the gap. And it is, it, to me... I look at I look at people like that this way. They are, you know, a lot of them are, you know, hypocrites, and they just don't want to, you know, hear your side or you know let you speak and so on. So, if you buy the book, the return, which is on Amazon and yes, Amazon, uh, we have both both the paper, uh, the hard copy, and also a Kindle version. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. it's it's a it's a really good book. I actually, you know, um, I'm still um, almost done part two but i'm not going to say more about part two because you know that's where this you know the story it it gets it gets very interesting yeah let's let's speak of the back you know you have a story um yeah um so um i i decided to yeah so that's the cover page so let me explain the cover page Mm -hmm. uh initially the whole conversation you know again when i when i um decided to put the book together i said i talked to a friend right and I was telling him about um, the same, you know, how I want, how I want to, because I was so excited, yeah. how I want the cover page to be. And, you know, and I explained to you and I said, well, I want people to see different side of Africa because the whole conversation is about a boy finding his route and going mm-hmm. back to Africa or going back to Africa. Right. And so if you look at the, the, the cover page. Yeah. They have people from African descent, mm-hmm. based on the way they, they dress, and they are walking on a street, kind of a street or in front of building and all that. Right. Yeah. And then 
a boy holding a backpack with you know a hoodie hoodie and then he's looking back and he's looking at all these beautiful riches mm. like all these beautiful buildings and nice environment right that depicts a lot of places in africa right yeah, yeah. so that's the whole concept of the cover you know we i mean i wanted to make it like the boy facing us and turning his back but i realized that that might mean something different to somebody so uh because people want to see the boys the boys i mean face. yeah so even w- me looking at this you know i'm an artist so that's why you see a lot yeah of, yeah me looking at this i can you know also translate it and say okay the boy could be the african-american who you know is facing the african culture but then not being able you know to actually grab it because he's stuck between the lines from two stories yes two, cultures. two, two cultures yes yeah. and and it, that's beautiful because that's where the book the book touch based on all these right. angles that that you see you, you, you see it and then you have the african mob Ma- as the moon yes because, looking down yes because I, there's you know you know africa is one of the largest continents it's one of among the largest continents right in you know in, 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 the, whole in world. the whole world so um we cannot you know and that's where a lot of resources are yeah. we cannot remove africa from the world and africa has to be, be as i said that's why people like wb du bois mm-hmm. the reason why they went to africa to form wb du bois and the rest went to africa to form pan-africanism is because they, they know that the only way we can fight or we can become you know self-reliance and be able to build ourselves is for us to unite so to unite and this is where you know my issue is with not african-american but african itself we say the year of return we say oh everybody come to to africa right you, if you are in a diaspora come and then help us you know improve the continent yes people want to come and yet we see a lot of um high prices when it comes to uh real estate number one you want you want you want me to come but then it's very expensive versus what people are paying in in the diaspora the job also is not there you you want people to come and and these people here already feel very com- they are very comfortable i mean you're right and that's why i like what you do you know on this platform you know you speak to issues and then you discuss issues and all that so i think that as young people who are from africa or africa descent and then we, we know the truth as how things are i was just talking to a friend uh, quite uh, me concerning the euro uh, if you look at how they play the euro, euro yeah 2020 which is 20, yeah 2021 they play and when it comes to that i was just thinking about the world cup mm-hmm. look at the number of countries that come from europe yeah and the number of countries that come from africa yeah when you do the ratio it's it's not yeah so we have to as young people we have to speak against some of these things and bring you know not not in a very aggressive way but dialogue and be able to make sure that we meet a middle ground because if we speak against it our old folks will, they will eventually go right but we believe that our contemporaries might pick that and say you know yeah. what the next generation of the leaders that are going to come this is what that is why i believe in writing because yeah. then somebody could pick your art yeah and that's why i like what you're doing your artwork and all that it speaks yeah. to issues yeah so let's continue to dialogue let's continue to speak let's continue to talk and i believe that if our old folks are gone if they haven't changed any if they are not willing to change if they are not willing to make any impact i believe that our con- contemporaries will take the next leadership position we'll or change. We'll they, they, change. they will make a change that's what i believe the next the youth coming you know stay up the change is coming um, you have last words that you want to share anything about the book that you know we didn't touch on that you want to share and where can we find the book and you know what is the next um thing for you george amimo thank you so much and first of all i just want to say thank you for giving me the platform um and i really appreciate you for uh you know supporting a brother um, so the book is available, as I said, on Amazon. Uh, we have both uh, paper copy. Uh, it's print on demand. So if you if you have Amazon Prime, you should get it the following day or two. Two, yeah. And you also have the Kindle version. Yeah. And if you have unlimited Kindle, you can get it for free. Um, and you know, sh- you know, if go go to Amazon, get a copy, share it. To, you know, the story is a very leading story. Yeah. It's a story that when you pick up, you cannot put the book down. Right. Read it and give us, you know give a review support right. a, support 
the whole idea about we Africans collaborating with our brothers in the U.S. Yeah. and then be able to. And if you have any African American friend, buy one for them and yeah. encourage them to read. And then let us all, all understand that we are from two different worlds, but we are not apart. We can come together and be able to work things out and be able to build. One of the things that um, they're talking about is repatriation. A lot of African Americans think that we Africans are not supposed to be part of it, which is a conversation that is on Clubhouse, right? So if you have a friend <laughs> like that, get one for them. Let them read so that they can see the two sides of the world. Yeah. And say that, okay, this is how we African Americans see Africans. Right. You know, and yeah. because and, and there's one thing I also want to talk about the book. It's also about um how and we talked about even we talked about initially about oh we when we come here we say well, this one, but at the same time, we are united. Yeah. As Africans, when we come here. We try so much hard to be united even yeah. more than back in in, in, in Africa. In, in yeah. Africa. So I think that's one of the good things that you're also going to learn in the book, yeah. and and then be able to relate to. If and you I, you know, I think that that itself, Africans being united in 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 the diaspora should be something that you know we should take back to Africa. Yes. Yes. And teach the people yeah. to unite as one. Yes. And to work together and build. And build uh, the country or the continent yes. for themselves, yes. you know. Yes. So, um, I mean, yes, I, you're right, and we should. And for me, I think that be able to put this in a book form, and my whole goal is to be able to get it in on uh, audio version as well, right? And also, because this is not the only book that I have coming. Of course, you ask about my next project. The next project. Um, I just I've written two books so far. I want to push this one first. The second one is the title is the second. Is also as about you know how you know how you live in Ghana if you live in Nima or Choco, Choco yeah. or Mamobi or Newtown or Medina people yeah. think that you cannot compare yourself to somebody who live in maybe yeah, Laboni, yeah. Regimano, or Cantonment. Yeah. So I brought that struggle out that young people living in a, in, in a slum after coup d'état yeah. and then they were able to set up a radio station mm. in the military government. Yeah. So, and then they were able to get United Nations, the BBCs to get involved and force the government to, you know, change the country back to civilian. Yeah, that's, that's regime, my yeah. next book. So, I just want to give a little hi- hype about that. But yeah, I, I would love to read that yeah, book. And, I, and that that book is a... Yeah, that's a history book. Yeah, right yeah, yeah. So, and, and one thing that I wrote, I was able to observe, I think that would change maybe a lot of people in Africa that the military, you know, leader at the time said... Through the wife's pressure, right, said, "Why you want to still keep power? Yeah. The whole world is gonna is, is against you, so drop power." And he said he went back and said and told the wife, "Okay, what do you think about this? I want all the leadership in every sector, the churches, the the civil aviation, um, the, the military, the police service, um, the entertainment industry, all the leaders should come out with a." a, a like a six, a, sorry, a 10 year policy. Wow. And said that, and swear an affidavit that they'll follow that. And that's the only way he can change the government to civil. And he did. And then the country became one of the most powerful countries in West Africa. Wow. So that's the book. That's my next, my next book. That's the next book. The Return. George Amimo. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. I really and, appreciate um, it. Um, I will be hoping to have you next time, maybe when the second. Or maybe to have um, a discussion on just the diaspora experience itself. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. So thank you so much. Hey!